morning, Mac family. Thanks for joining our Mac service online. I'm Pastor Steve, and this is my wife, Sarah, and we are so excited to worship God with you this morning. Today, we are gonna be celebrating the graduating class of 2020. As COVID-19 has disrupted many of your graduation plans, we wanna to take today to let you know how proud we are of you and that you are not forgotten. Over the next few moments, we wanna offer you some encouragement, so listen in. Congratulations, seniors! I am so proud of you. It has been a privilege to be a part of your life over the last couple years. God is truly working in your lives, and I cannot wait to see what God has for you and what He does through you in the coming months and the coming years. Remember to stick tight to Jesus. He's the only way you'll get through anything. And remember who you are and whose you are. I'd like to say congratulations to Jessica, class of 2020, and the most physically fit Marine. Entire golf company. Congratulations. Congratulations, Sissy. Bye. Hi, seniors. I just want to give you this word of encouragement from Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. It says, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and do not depend on your own understanding. Seek His will in all you do, and He will show you which path to take. God bless you as you go forward, and I'll be praying for you. Hey, guys. I'm excited to see the amazing journey that you are about to embark on, each with a fire and desire to accomplish and touch lives as you go along. I know you all will work hard to accomplish all those goals. I love you guys. So congrats. Y'all made it. Hey, Brandon. Congratulations on your graduation from Mount Vernon Nazarene. Uh, we love you, and we're so proud of all your hard work these last four years. Brandon, we're so proud of uh, the young man that you have become over the years, and we are just with you uh, all the way. We love you, and congratulations. Hey, Brandon, congrats on graduating, and we're going to be confident to talk with you this year, and just getting closer to brother. Congrats. Hey, seniors, congratulations, guys. I'm so proud of you. Two pieces of advice. Number one, start paying off your student loans a little bit at a time as quickly as you can. But number two, and most importantly, each day trust that God has his plan for you already rolled out. All you have to do is use faith, activate it, and ask him to give you the guidance each and every day to do what he has set forth for you. Way to go, guys. Right now, we'd like to say congratulations to our granddaughter, Hallie, who just graduated from college. And for her, I want her to remember, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understandings, but in all ways, except Him, He will guide your path. We love you. Hey to the graduating seniors. Don't let those setbacks define you. You define them. And you let them make you grow to the top of success. And just be fearless and just don't settle. And I love you guys, and I just can't wait to see what God has in store for you. Congratulations. We're so sorry you couldn't uh, have all the parties and the fun that goes with that. And we just trust that you're, li you're, you're trusting God in your future and that you're putting Him first. And after that, it's going to go great. Congrats again. Congratulations, class of 2020. Woo we are so proud of you. And we are so excited to see the path that the good Lord directs you. Remember that your church family is your biggest cheerleader. And we want the best for you. But I'm going to leave you with just a few little statements that I used to tell my kids, which I think you're a part of my kids. Be good. Let your conscience be your guide. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. And don't forget Jesus. We love you. We're proud of you. What's up, class of 2020? We love you. We're so excited for you. For our local grab, for my family, yeah. uh, our family, anybody. Sprinkled all over the U.S. We know you. We're super proud of you. Way yeah. to go. Woohoo! And although this is an interesting way to graduate, it is a beautiful place to start. And we totally believe God's got you in his hands and is going to lead you into that dynamic place in the future. We can't wait to cheer you on and be there with you as much as we can be. Welcome to Mac Church Online. We 
encourage you to join the conversation by commenting during the service. It would mean the world to us if you could share this so others can hear about God's greatness. We invite you to stand as we worship.
We just wanted to take a few minutes and recognize our graduating seniors from college, Brandon Mount, who's graduating from Mount Vernon Nazarene uh, with a degree in biology with a focus on pre-med, and as well, Hallie Brown, graduating from The Ohio State University with a degree in uh, elementary education. And then also we have a short video just as a tribute to our graduating seniors from high school. So we hope you enjoy. Lord, bless this child with gifts galore from heaven up above. Give her faith and understanding. Fill her little heart with love. Give her patience, give her wisdom, and let laughter fill her days. Give an angel song to light her nights and guidance on her way. Give her hope when things seem hopeless. Give her trust when all else fails. Give her strength to know the difference so that right always prevails. Lord, bless this child with all the gifts a little one may need, so she might grow up strong in faith, for then she will succeed. And although she did not grow up her entire life in the Mac Church family, the treasured lessons she learned while here have also helped her to continue to grow into the success that she is today and yet to be. So congratulations. As I sit here and I try to think, do I make this letter funny and include a story about how you got your head stuck in our front porch banister? Or do I show your personality by telling a story about you chucking Hot Wheels at your brother's head because he wasn't playing fairly? But it's so hard to put into a letter everything that I want to say to you. You have accomplished and grown so much. Those accomplishments show who you've become. They've made you who you are. You come home after 12, 13 hours of hard physical labor and never complain. You talk about how savage your edging skills are. These things make me swell with pride in who you've become. Your dad and I want you to have more than we've ever had. I don't mean material things, although some of those things aren't bad to have either. But I mean friends, love, laughter, faith. And I know that one day, you will make a family very lucky to have as their husband and father. Cade, go and make each day matter. We have the greatest confidence in you and know that you will make the right decisions when the time comes. You and your brother are the greatest things that have ever happened to me and your dad. We love you, Cade, and we are so, so proud of you. And now here we are the end of your senior year and 18 years of memories. Wow, did it ever go fast. This year has been a little chaotic, especially the last few months. It's been a bit of a whirlwind and not according to some arbitrary plan, but according to God's plan. And of course, with his plan came his provisions. As I see the young man I raised prepare to be on his own, I reflect back on the adventure so far and I pray you see the awesome human I see. The kind, gentle, funny, strong, handsome, hardworking young man that is taking this huge step into the next leg of his adventure. I love you, Alex, more than you will ever know. This milestone is bittersweet and my heart is not just full, it's overflowing. I'm so proud to call you my son. I pray you allow God to reveal a little more of his greatness each and every day, that you truly listen to his voice and allow him to guide you along the way. God bless you, buddy. Go and do great things. Love, Mom. Well, we've made it. We will shed more tears in the next few weeks, but not because we are sad or that we are afraid you will fail. Actually, quite the opposite. We know you will soar. Sure, our hearts hurt knowing that each day we are closer to you fully spreading your wings and flying, but what a beautiful journey it has been so far. You, our beautiful baby girl, are special. You have the joy and love of Jesus that others can see from far off. These years have been full of making memories, growing pains, and moments where I stood back in awe watching you become you. 
So as you open the door to your new journey, remember that you are covered in prayer, that God has a big plan for you, and this year will be an amazing entrance into it. Go do big things like you've already done for the past 17 years. We have no doubt that the next will be even better. We will always be your biggest cheerleaders. We love you, Peanut, and couldn't be prouder. We've got some really great announcements for you guys this morning. Hey Tribe, what do you have for us? Check us out on Facebook and Instagram for up-to-date news and interactive posts throughout the week. Don't forget that we encourage you to comment below throughout the service as we praise and worship together. We are doing Zoom calls throughout the week. The all church prayer Zoom call is Wednesday from 7 to 8 p.m. You can join that call anytime between 7 and 8. The young adult Zoom call is tonight at 6 and the youth ministry Zoom call is next week at 6. As we are heading into our new normal, we are looking for some feedback from you. Would you mind taking a moment and fill out the survey as we look to gather together again? Check us out at the mac.life slash survey. Kids, we hope you enjoyed our Mac class that premieres Sundays at 8.30 a.m. Mrs. Jackson has enjoyed teaching them from a distance and we are so grateful for it. If you missed this morning's class, take a look at it after the service. There are four ways you can give financially. The Mac app, online at the mac.life, Set up bill pay through your bank. Mail a check to 291 West Hick Road. Right now would be a good time to join in the giving. Will you join me in prayer this morning? Lord, we thank you for this time this morning that we can set apart about an hour to just sit in your presence, Lord. And Lord, I pray for each one that is listening today that today would be the start of a new week of spending time with you. And Lord, that throughout this week that we would, um, we would open our Bibles, we would fall on our knees, and Lord, we will call upon your name um, for our country, for our nation, for our families. Lord, that this weekend there would be revival in our homes and that we would see your power unleashed in Mansfield, in California, in Oregon, wherever you are listening to this this morning, we pray revival would start wherever you are. So Lord, go before us through the rest of this sermon. We know that you're already here. We don't need to invite you because we know that you are here. So Lord, have your way this morning. Lord, we pray for Pastor Josh as he preaches this morning that they would not be his words, but they would be words from you. We pray for the worship team as they continue to lead us in worship, that Lord, these songs would touch our hearts uh, in different ways, but in the way that you need to get a hold of us the most. We thank you for the Mac. We thank you for your power that goes on even though we've been quarantined for so long. And Lord, we just give you the rest of this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Please stand as we worship together.
is a light that the shadows can't deny. Your name cannot be overcome. Your name is a light forever. Could not hold you. The nail torn before you. Silence the woes, the sin and pain. The heavens are roaring. Praise of your glory. For you are raised to life again. You have no right. Nothing can stand against what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus.
This morning, we have the opportunity to hear from Pastor Josh as he preaches on Christ our healer. We all have areas in our life that need healing. So our prayer this morning is that we would be open to the Lord for where he needs to do some healing work in our lives. We hope you are blessed this morning. Good morning, everyone. I'm so excited to be here with you. My name is Josh Wells. I am the youth and young adults pastor here at Mansfield Alliance Church, or the MAC, um, which you've been hearing throughout the last several weeks. Um, and I have to start with just giving you a little quick preview. Um, I've been going through a series um, over the last several months called The Fourfold Gospel. And that includes Christ our Savior, Christ our Sanctifier, Christ our Healer, and Christ our Coming King. And so even though today is a youth service and we are celebrating our graduating seniors, uh, I've really been praying uh, with the Lord, just asking him, do you want me to pick a different topic or do you want me to keep going with this series? And every time he just spoke very plainly, do Christ our healer. Um, so I'm excited to, to share with you this morning, uh, healing. Who doesn't want healing? I mean, think about it. Do you want to live in pain? Do you want to have sickness? No, we're miserable during those times, right? Even if it's an emotional thing, we don't want to hang on to that because we're depressed, we're sad. We want healing, right? So I think it's safe to say that we all have things in our lives that need healing. So there are three definitions that came up when I searched the definition of healing. The first is curing or curative, and I have to apologize, I'm a word buff, so I had to include this in here. The second is growing sound or mending, and the third is the act or process of regaining health. So the reason I bring those up is because it puts in perspective the need of healing, whether it is, as I already mentioned, a physical, an emotional, a spiritual, or other kind of need. It fits that definition. So this morning, the scripture that I want to bring up for you is James chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. It says this, Is any one of you sick? He should call the elders of the church to pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise him up. If he has sinned, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other, and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. So in breaking down the scripture, uh, it's clear several things. I think we all understand the physical healing and going to the elders and all that. But this passage is also very clear in that Jesus heals sin. And I don't want to spend too much time on that topic because we covered a lot of that with Christ our Savior but it is important to understand that he doesn't just heal physical things. He heals sin as well, and that's huge. Before we dive into the meat of this message, I want to pray. So join me in prayer. Lord, you are so good. You are compassionate. You are kind. And Lord, you heal for many reasons. You heal to get people's attention. You heal for your honor and for your glory. You heal because you love us. And so, Lord, as we get into this message, I pray that you would just open our hearts, that you would open our minds and our eyes to what it is in our lives that needs healing. Lord, that you would come and work in a mighty way. Father, that you would restore. Lord, we've seen your mighty hand of healing. And so we ask that you would do it again. As the song says, we will see you do it again. So Lord, in your name, I just ask that you will bless the rest of our time and that we would see your mighty hand at work. And all as we pray in your name, amen. There are three truths that we can find in scripture about healing. So the first is this, that Jesus is still healer. So back in the day of the disciples in the early church, many felt that sin actually was the reason that people were sick. But I want to debunk that a little bit today. Um, you are not wrong in that some people are sick because of sin, but not all people are sick because of sin. 
Some are sick because Jesus is putting them to the test. He's testing their faith. Others, he allows it for his honor and for his glory. So it's not just because of sin. The other thing is that many people ask the question, why do we not see healing happening today like it did in the early church? And there's a reason for that. And I want to share with you what uh, Reverend John F. Soper, um, how he words that. He says, they were full of the Holy Spirit. We leak. In other words, we're not always full as we should be. He says, they were fully obedient. And far too often, we are not. He also says that they were fully expecting to see God work. Today, we are surprised when he does. And if that's not a telling statement, I don't know what is. And I'm going to tell you firsthand that I'm guilty of that. I fall into that category of lack of faith and doubt, even though I've personally seen God's mighty hand heal. And yet we struggle with that, don't we? We even go through and we pray the prayer, God, heal somebody, but we doubt that he's actually going to do it. So it's a change in mindset that we need to expect. And what excites me is that our church is at that point, I feel. We are expecting and ready for God to work and not surprised that he's going to. So I hope you join me in that belief and in those prayers of that. The second truth is this, that Jesus is the only reason for healing. Healing comes through Jesus alone. So society gives us all kinds of things. You can even see it on the large churches. There's pastors there that claim that miracle water brings healing. Uh, you'll hear people say that it comes from within us. It's an inner peace, that there's a balance of reading this or connecting this with that. But that's not true. You will also hear people talk about faith healers and or that faith is the reason that healing happens. But it's not. Faith is a factor in it, but it is not the driver of healing. That comes from Jesus alone. And the third truth that I really want to drive home that I believe answers the question that we've all asked ourselves. And the question is, why isn't everyone healed? Or why was I not healed? Or why was my family member not healed? And I believe this truth answers that question perfectly. So here's the third truth, that healing always brings God glory. Now, the hard part in that is that that doesn't always answer or fulfill what we expect it to or want it to. We always want the healing, right? Because healing feels good. But that's not always what brings God the most glory. If it is in his will to heal and bring him glory, then he does. But if it's in his will and brings him more glory to not heal, then that's what he does. And I want to share with you um, some examples from my own personal life and some examples from my family's life. So many of you have heard the story of my firstborn son, Noah. And my wife asked me to not share the gory details because she doesn't like them. Um, so I'll just give you the short version. But I share it because it is a powerful story of what God did and how he got glory from it. So we were in Austria and our son was born six weeks early. He was premature, so it ended in an emergency C-section. He lost oxygen during that time and ended up with 75% of his brain bleeding. Um, the doctor pulled me aside and said, we're not sure if he's going to make it through the first night. And it was about the first three nights that I heard this. Um, we were told that he would be brain damaged for sure. We were told that he might not have full use of his ligaments. We were told that he would need intense therapy. He ended up having seizures. And so we were in the hospital with him for a total of three months, not knowing what the future held. But there's no better place to be than fully dependent and fully reliant on the Lord. And I can tell you that as hard as it was, God gave me a peace and an understanding that Noah was his son before he was my son. But I'm proud to tell you that that's not the end of the story. He spared his life. And what's even greater is that thousands of people around the world were praying for my wife and I and for Noah. And so the bigger picture than even just his healing was how God got glory throughout all those people. 
the faith that increased in those people. And the better part is we'll never even know the full extent of what God really did. I can't wait to hear stories from other people later on in life, maybe through Facebook, through sharing and conversations. But that's one example of God's mighty, powerful hand in healing. And so today, my son is doing everything they said he wouldn't. And I will never forget the words that the doctor told us when we came here and they did all kinds of neurological tests. The doctor walked in and he said, I'm not sure why you're here. There's nothing wrong with your son. Nothing but the power of Jesus. But I am reminded of the contrary. I'm reminded of my father-in-law. He was diagnosed with progressive dementia um, about the year that my wife Beth and I uh, were married. And we prayed more times than I can count for healing for him. But the Lord had other plans. It was hard to watch a man who was such a God-fearing servant to the Lord deteriorate. Somebody who could build anything. Actually, my nickname for him was MacGyver because he could. He could build anything. But to watch him repeat himself and not remember our names was very difficult. But I'm here to tell you again that God got glory. And here's how. Because my father-in-law's attitude and character came through day after day. And again, I will never forget the words that he repeated over and over and over to everybody that he came across. He would say, you know, I don't know anything, but what I do know is that Jesus loves me and I love him. Powerful stuff. God gets the glory. He also got the glory through my mother-in-law in the fact that she remained true to her marriage and cared for him during that time. And even during that time, and I think we all know that during the difficult times, it's easy to want to give up and just quit. But God is bigger than that. And my mother-in-law was a perfect example of that. Her relationship with the Lord grew during that time because she had to rely on him. So even though my father-in-law was not healed physically, the Lord did so many other different kinds of healing in our own lives. And so I want to encourage you that whatever it is that is in your life that needs healing, that you would trust God with it. So remember that third truth. If you remember any of the three, remember that one. That God gets the glory no matter what. So I really want you to take some time this week to ask the Lord what it is in your life that needs healing. Because remember, the scriptures tell us, and I'm going to go back to James chapter 5, verses 14 through 16, that it tells us to confess our sins to one another so that we can pray for each other and be there for each other. For what? So that we may be healed. And again, he tells us in this scripture that it's not from anything else. Who's the one that will raise us up? It's Jesus and Jesus alone. So please share with somebody. Don't keep it to yourself. But at minimal, please give it to Jesus and let him start the healing process. So will you pray with me? Because I really feel like during this coronavirus, I mean, it's obvious. We've had seniors who have missed sports seasons. We've had graduations missed. We've got people currently dealing with depression, loneliness, abuse, and many other things that need healing. So again, please join me in prayer. Lord, you are the almighty God. You are the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. Lord, it, it starts with you. And so Lord, help us to put aside anything else that we've put in the way of you. Lord, help us, give us discernment in what it is in our lives that needs healing. And so, Lord Jesus, we ask that your Holy Spirit would come, that you would reveal that to us, and Lord, that we wouldn't just hear it, Lord, but that we would truly give it to you and surrender it. Because, Lord, healing is great. Lord, it frees us from that bondage. It frees us from that depression, whatever it is. 
And so, Lord, we thank you in victory ahead of time. And, Lord, I can't wait to hear the testimonies of what you've done in people's lives. Lord, may we, may we get together when that day comes and be able to share all the stories of what you've done during this time. So we thank you and we praise you. And we look forward to your healing. And all this we pray in your name. Amen. So let's sing this great song together.
thank you, Pastor Josh, worship team, and all of the youth for bringing such a great service. We hope that the seniors felt honored this morning, and our prayer is that God would be glorified in your lives as you go out into the world, whether if it's to the workforce or to college or to wherever God has for you. Our prayer is that God would get glory in your lives. Remember, you always have a place here at the Mac. Have a great week, and we can't wait to see you back here next week.